Hey, it's Patty Sharf, CPA and co-founder of Catching Clouds, a leader in e-commerce accounting. And I feel like it's time for a little bit more technical video this week. So I'm going to go through one of my favorite zaps and just kind of walk through the steps and show you how I do stuff. I think you're going to like it. All right, so before I get started, this zap is going to be how to pull data from your shopping cart in, and, and post an invoice directly into Xero with no actual manual entry needed. All right, if you aren't familiar with Zapier, you need to go check out my introductory video there. If you are familiar with Zapier, then I think you'll appreciate this, especially this is kind of a bit more of an advanced kind of setup, but hopefully you can follow along as I walk through it, okay? So here's what I'm doing. Um, I want to put a big old disclaimer on here. A lot of people try to pull their transactions in one by one into their accounting system. And for years I have been evangelizing about why this is a horrible, horrible idea. So I will now proceed to pull in my transactions one by one. <laughs> Seriously, this is for the low volume people, the people who aren't planning on having their business ex businesses explode with thousands of sales per month because It'll crush your system no matter which way you do it. But I use this for course sales that I have. It's always, I, I've never come close to selling more than a hundred courses in a month, like not even remotely close to there. So I feel very confident in using this app and it works beautifully, okay? So let's get started. I'm in Zapier. I've, I start with my trigger action. So the trigger action is gonna be, hey, you sold a course. So if you're selling on Shopify, it may trigger there. In this case, I'm looking at Teachable. So Teachable, I sell a course on Teachable and that says, hey, Zapier, run my Zap, okay? Now, I always have this kind of intermediary step where I pull the data into a Google Sheet partially because Google Sheets works really well in Zapier and partially because I just kind of like to have this historical record of what's going on so that I can see, like just see where everything is and get a lay of the land. I have like this historical listing of everything that happened in the past and I, it just makes me feel better. You don't actually need this step, but I just find it easier to use a Google Sheet. Okay, so let me show you what I'm talking about. In this one, it kind of lays out the whole spreadsheet. So I'm gonna be pulling in the buyer name, the email, the transaction date, what they bought, how much they paid, if there were any refunds, if there were coupons, you get the idea. So all the details that comes in through the sale, particularly as it relates to the financial activities with it, um, the deposit amount, if there are any coupon codes and things like that, that's all gonna be included in this app. I'm also gonna pull in my PayPal ID and my Stripe ID, so depending on which way they pay, um, I'm gonna have record of that in this spreadsheet. It's gonna look something like this, where it's keeping track of, you can see like all the coupon codes and different things, um, and, and it's keeping track of the processing fees, any discounts, and things like that. Now, once I have that, I'm gonna do some actual, some funky stuff, like I'll set it up in my CRM so I keep track of like what people have bought. I might make a notification in Slack to let me know, hey, I sold a course. But I wanna skip down to um, this right here, my Stripe line item array, all right? So what this is, is within Zapier, you can have this, a formatting step. Okay, sometimes you'll use it for changing how a date looks. Sometimes you'll have it to change the currency or something like that. But in this case, there's a special zap type called utilities. Okay, and in the template of it, I'm going to choose this thing that says line itemizer create append prepend. Now, what I'm doing is I'm building an array. Now, before your mind explodes because you're like, what the heck is an array? I have a graphic for you. So basically an array is nothing more than a table of data. So in this case, I've got this little table of data here. I've got the price, which might be the sales price. It might be the um, discount. It might be the payment processing fee, okay? Then I've got associated with this same line of data I've got a code. 
So you can see the price is the sales price and it is associated with the code accounting for Shopify. And it also has this description accounting for accounting for Shopify. Okay. The fees, it corresponds fees. And then the description is payment processing fees. Um, the last amount is the discount for this particular discount that I had on selling my course. And all of those are in this nice little table. And that's what I'm building in Zapier. So this is what it looks like when you use the line itemizer. Okay. And we're going to use this in a later step. So it's important that we set this up before that future step. Okay. I'm going to call this array invoice lines because these are going to be the detailed line items that are going to show up on my invoice. All right. And then you'll see, I'll just put these side by side so you can see what I'm doing. I just, labeled these lines, price, code, description, price, code, description, okay? And then the information that I'm pulling, these all come from earlier steps in my Zap. So this, so, um, the 399 came from where I pulled out my price. So when it comes from Teachable, for whatever reason, it comes out as like $399 comes out as $39,900. Um, I don't know why it doesn't have the, the last two trailing digits. So, um, so I had to reformat them into the right like structure. If you're using something like Shopify, it doesn't put the decimal place in the wrong place. So you don't even need this step, this reformatting step. Okay. And you could just pick this field um, directly from the sales price, and then you separate it with a comma. So what you're doing here is you are saying, these are the three numbers that I want coming in. And these numbers may change over time with the next sale. The next person might not have a discount code. The next one might have a different discount code or whatever. But whatever comes through in that field, like for sales, it's going to come in here. And then it's going to have the sales amount, comma, the fees amount, comma, and then the discount amount. Okay. And it's all the price is always going to be the same. So when we build that invoice, which I'll show you in a minute, on each line under the dollar amount for that line item, it's going to have one of these numbers. Okay. And then same deal. I just go through in order, so like the 399 matches up with accounting for Shopify, the 1129 matches up with fees, the discounts amount lines up with discounts. And then same thing for the description. Okay, so I've just built out this table in my line item properties. Okay, now um, the rest of this I don't really care about. I don't need to subtotal anything. And yes, I want my decimal places to be two, two digits. Okay, now I carry on. Now I've got this little list of data, my little table of data that it's grabbing from the sale that I made. Okay, now let's go to path A. I got, I got a little fancy where path A is if they pay by Stripe, path B is if they pay by PayPal. You can figure that out if you want to. Um, it is not difficult, but I'm just gonna show you one way. It's basically the same either way you do it. Okay, so path A, I'm using Stripe. So I'm going to go create my sales invoice and this is what it looks like. I will um, add this action, connect it to my zero account, and then I will in the template, go ahead and set this stuff up. Under the contact name, I don't actually need the individual person's name of who bought my course in my accounting file. I already have that in Teachable. In fact, I also have it on my spreadsheet that I created. So I don't need it in zero, just cluttering things up. It just doesn't matter. I also don't really need the email address. I'm not gonna be emailing Teachable at some random person's email address every time. It's just not necessary, okay? I will set the status as submit for approval or I might set it to draft. You can set it so that it automatically gets approved and then you don't have to do anything like it's approved and then when money comes in the bank you just match the deposit against that approved invoice and you're good to go 
but I get skittish about technology a little bit in the sense that I want to review it and make sure things are working as intended. So I'll put it to submit for approval. I go in there every day and review stuff anyway, so it's fine. Okay, I'll put the invoice date as today because as soon as that sale triggers, it's gonna hit my account, so today is the day. And then I'll put the due date as 48 hours from now because it's gonna take a couple of days for the payment to clear through Stripe and land in my bank account. So I don't want it to show as an overdue invoice. It just annoys me. So I just show the due date as a couple days later, okay? Then under the reference number, I will pull from the original sale who bought my course and then the Stripe transaction ID. So you can see where it says step one, step two, you can go back and look at, here, let me go back and look at it. So step one means it came from the teachable stuff. Step two says it came from here, okay? So if you wanna see what that looks like, let me just show you real quick. If I wanted anything else added to that reference number, I could just go in here and go pick it. Maybe I want the coupon code. I would just click that and it would get added to the things that are gonna show up in my reference number in zero. But I don't want that, so I deleted it and away we go. All right, now we get to the fun part. This is where we have the individual line items on the invoice. I go in here and under line item code, I'm gonna use a custom value because it's gonna be different every time based on which course they buy and things like that. So I wanna go down to where it says use a custom value and use that. And then in here, what I'm gonna pick is the line item code code <laughs> that I used. So you can see this is from step eight. Here, let me just show you. This is from step eight which was the Stripe line item array that I showed you. And then I'm gonna scroll down to find this, the code. So see how it's got code description price? Code description price, right? So I'm gonna pick code for this one. And then for the description, I'm gonna pick the description. For the price, I'm gonna pick the price. And then for the line quantity, I'm just gonna put 1.0. That's what's kind of required to make this work. And away we go. That's all there is to it. I also use tracking in zero, so I'll set up like what this relates to. In my case, it's Academy, and then I show where the income came from, whatever. Okay, so when I run this zap, so when somebody buys a course on my um, account, it's gonna show up looking something like this. So here's the date that it was created. Here's the due date. Here's the reference code that I had entered. You'll notice it went to Teachable. And then the item code that I had put in there, accounting for Shopify fees and discounts, that's gonna put that information in here. One thing I wanna tell you about is if you want all this information to get coded automatically, so you'll notice how this goes to the account online courses, this goes to merchant service fees, this goes to sales discounts. You'll notice like that did not exist in the zap that I set up. So you might be wondering where that came from. If you go up to business and you go to products and services, we're gonna set up an item code for each of these different things. Accounting for Shopify fees and discounts. So you'll see anytime I use the code accounting for Shopify in an invoice, it will automatically go through, it knows the unit price, it knows the sales account, it knows the tax rate and the description to use. And it's gonna use those unless I overwrite it in my zap. So all of these that had a code, it has a default description and code and everything like that. If it has a special description that you wanna use, it can overwrite what's in there, okay? But at the end of the day, you're gonna have all this information in there. It's going to total to the net amount that's gonna de be deposited into your bank because we already took out the payment processing fees. Bonus tip, if you're using PayPal, I would not include that here because 
PayPal has its own feed and it's not going to take out the payment processing fees. It'll do that separately. So you won't want to include that when you're going through and creating the invoice in PayPal. Um, but it ties to the penny every time. It's a beautiful thing. I love this app and I hope it helped you. So I hope you like this video. If you did, please like, comment, and share. If you haven't already, please subscribe and I'll catch you later.